Holy Gospel according to John. Glory Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said, I still have many things to say to you, but you cannot bear them now. When the Spirit of truth comes, he will guide you into all the truth, for he will not speak on his own, but will speak whatever he hears, and he will declare to you the things that are to come. He will glorify me because he will take what is mine and declare it to you. All that the Father has is mine. For this reason, I said that he will take what is mine and declare it to you. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise Praise to you, Lord. You may be seated. Well, good morning, everyone. Uh, As Pastor Alan said, my name is C.J. Clark. I am Executive Director of Living Water Ministries. Before I... Uh, take on the task of talking about the Holy Trinity today and camp and all of the things. Uh, I'd like to uh, introduce Living Water and what it is we do. I don't like to assume people know. Uh, as Pastor Ellen said, we are the, out, the youth organization, uh, the outdoor ministry organization also of the ELCA here in the lower peninsula of Michigan. So we do that work cooperatively with the Southeast Michigan Synod and the Episcopal Diocese of Michigan, who also supports us uh, in this work. And uh, that is summer camp. If you've been to summer camp, uh, no matter when you went to summer camp, uh, we do that. uh, That sleepaway camp where kids come together and grow in deep relationship with one another and have a whole lot of fun doing a whole lot of cool stuff and learn about God and grow in their faith. That's what we do, and we do that primarily as an expression of the churches like faith here in Okemos into the world. So there's a long history of kids from faith coming through camp at Stony Lake, especially in my time anyway. Um, So we do that, but we also do a whole lot more. Uh, We're doing camp in very different ways these days. We have, uh, for example, a week of camp that's for uh, exclusively for children in foster care. We have a week of camp that's for families who experience homelessness. We have a week of camp for adults with developmental disabilities. We have uh, two different weeks of camp for high school age kids. One is a leadership development and anti-racism program. The other is a 
culturally immersive cross-cultural experience called Myla, and these two programs are national in scope, bringing in kids from all over the country. Uh, so we're, we're doing things classically and very contemporarily, very, very new ways of doing things. Like your church here, diversity and inclusion are huge for us, and we really lean into that. Our mission statement calls us to serve all of God's children, and we really you know, fervently strive to do that. So much so that this summer, we decided to offer camp for free to everybody as our way to come back from two years of cancellation as a result of COVID and really lean into this accessible, all of God's children approach our mission calls us to be about. On top of all that, it's been busy. We built a new building, a duplex cabin, uh, a 2,100 square foot piece of facility that will be open uh, here for camp next week for its first summer. And we just celebrate all the great things happening. And we thank you for the ways that your support, both to camp and through the Synod, helped make all that happen. My history with this is that I grew up in Michigan. I grew up in the Kalamazoo area, Portage specifically, and I was a camper at Stony Lake for three summers. For those not familiar, Stony Lake's about a half an hour north of Muskegon on the west side, like here, right? Uh, and so that's where uh, I went to camp as a kid for three summers. I came back, I worked as a couple of summer, for a couple of summers as a, a summer staff counselor, and then in 2005 came back full time to be the director of the camp, ultimately becoming executive director in 2010. And so this place has been significant for my faith journey. And I often say that I stand before you as an example of what we produce. So <laughs> decide at the end of the sermon whether that was smart to say. <laughs> today is Holy Trinity Sunday. In many churches today, preachers set before themselves the task to explain the complexity of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, and how all three of these things together are how we understand God and how God works. For the last four years, I've been engaged in seminary studies as I work toward becoming a pastor in the ELCA. And during my studies, I have encountered a word that might not make the, most, the Holy Trinity any less complex, but for me, it makes the Holy Trinity far more personal. This word is homoousius. It's a mouthful. It's one of those big, fancy seminary words. Homoousius is a word that essentially means made of the same stuff. And it's used to describe the ways Jesus is homoousius, or made of the same stuff as God. In the Nicene Creed, when we say, begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, we are talking about the sameness and oneness of God and Jesus. We are describing what it means for them to be homoousius with one another. We understand Jesus to be made of the same stuff as God because we understand Jesus to be fully divine. Yet simultaneously, we also understand Jesus to be fully human. And this is where it gets profound for me. Because if Jesus is fully human, if Jesus is made of the same bone, muscle, flesh, and skin as we are, if the blood that courses through Christ's veins is the same stuff that courses through ours, then we find ourselves being homoousius with Christ. We find ourselves being made of the same stuff as Jesus. And while we are not divine beings and can't claim to be made of the same stuff as God, the fact that we are made of the same stuff as Jesus, who is also made of the same stuff as God, makes the connection we all have with the divine feel extremely accessible to me. And then to top it all off, the Holy Spirit, who is also made of the same stuff as God, takes up residence in our lives, making a way for the divine to daily accompany us and dwell within us. God, the Father, the Son, and Holy Spirit, the Holy Trinity, homoousius, being made of the same stuff, it's a lot. Yeah, it's a lot to get the mind around. It's complex. More importantly, what, is, what does any of it mean for our lives today? Maybe even more importantly, what does any of this have to do with camp? To get at what the complexity of the Holy Trinity means for our lives and to dig a little deeper on the significance of this word homoousius being made of the same stuff, I want to tell you a story from camp. 
But it's a story that isn't necessarily flattering. In order for me to tell this story, I'm going to need you to remember one very important thing. And that one thing is that this story takes place 25 years ago. 25 years ago, things didn't always conform to the same nationally accredited practices and procedures that we stringently follow today. I was also not executive director 25 years ago. I'm going to need you to remember this. I was a member of the summer staff at Stony Lake, a cabin counselor specifically. I was 21. My brain was not fully developed yet. Keep that in mind. So hold on to all this as we travel 25 years into the past to the summer of 1997. As I said, I was 21 years old, and it was my first summer working on staff at Stony Lake as a cabin counselor, and each week I was tasked with caring for the physical, emotional, and spiritual well-being of 10 middle school boys who would stay in my cabin. No small order. Each week it was awesome watching them grow, and I was so moved and humbled by the faith that we shared in our nightly devotions that it literally changed the course of my life. I wouldn't be standing here before you today had it not been for the kids that stayed in my cabin and the way that we explored what it meant to be people of faith together. But not every week of camp was smooth sailing. The range of maturity found in a cabin of 6th to 8th grade middle school boys can create quite a chasm between the youngest and oldest members of that group. And on one particular week in the summer of 1997, 25 years ago, this wide spectrum of maturity resulted in a situation I will carefully refer to as an episode. At the time, 25 years ago, there was about 45 minutes each morning when campers would be sent back to their cabin unsupervised for cabin cleanup time while the summer staff were gathered for a daily meeting with the camp director. Rest assured, this does not happen anymore. There are no unsupervised times. However, during this unsupervised window, 25 years ago, it got into the mind of the oldest boy in my cabin, a mature eighth grader named Mike, that it would be a good idea to pick on Tommy, a fairly immature sixth grader, by hitting him across the back with a belt. While this episode happened in the morning, I didn't learn about it until later in the evening as our cabin, along with other cabins, was waiting for the bus to take us to Lake Michigan for an evening of programming on the beach. Tommy was sitting off to the side with some kids who weren't in our cabin, and he was crying. I approached him. I asked him what was wrong, and he shared with me what had occurred earlier that morning, naming Mike as the person that had harmed him. I asked if I could see his back, and he lifted up a shirt, revealing a red mark where he had been struck. And in that moment, I became a very, very special kind of angry. I made a beeline for Mike, who was standing nearby with some friends. Again, Mike was a mature eighth grader, and he was fairly tall. I remember pulling him aside, looking him square in the eye, and with an intimidating tone, asking him if he was the one that hit Tommy with the belt. He was caught off guard, gripped with what I hope was a healthy dose of fear, and unsure of what else to do. So he responded, yes. And this confession stoked the angry fires that were already burning within me. And I responded with the only question I could think to ask, which was, are you cool? To which Mike quickly responded by nervously declaring, uh, no. And then blood boiling, I looked him straight in the eyes and I said, I don't know what I'm going to do with you, but you're not going to like it. And then I walked away. Now please, please remember, this was 25 years ago. I was 21. My brain was not fully developed. I was not the executive director. We train our staff very differently these days. It was a very different time. The bus arrived, took all of us who were waiting to go to Lake Michigan, and, uh, and all the campers enjoyed, once we got there, a beautiful evening on the beach filled with games and a campfire and some snacks. And I spent the time mostly fuming, trying to figure out what I was going to do about all this, especially with what I was going to do with Mike. And as I considered what my course of action would be with Mike, I realized that while Mike was the one that hit Tommy with the belt, the rest of the cabin had been present and done nothing to stop what was occurring. So as we waited for the bus to arrive to camp, to arrive to return us back to camp, 
I pulled the cabin together without Tommy, explained to them that I knew what was, had happened, told them that while Mike had done it, they were all responsible for letting it happen, and that we would be going back to camp, skipping devotions, getting ready for bed, going to bed early, and that the next day they would all have to stay in the cabin, missing a three-hour block of programming, which would have eliminated them from waterfront and some other fun activities as a consequence. And then as we rode back to camp on that, that bus, I realized these are middle school boys. They don't really like devotions, so doing a devotion is more of a punishment. <laughs> and so I stuck with my plan for the evening. I had sort of a set plan of devotions I would do every night. And so I stuck with that plan. And we shared a reading together from Romans chapter 12, and that reading included these words. Don't just pretend to love others. Really love them. Hate what is wrong. Hold tightly to what is good. Love each other with genuine affection and take delight in honoring each other. When God's people are in need, be ready to help them. Always be eager to practice hospitality. Bless those who persecute you. Don't curse them. Pray that God will bless them. Be happy with those who are happy and weep with those who weep. Live in harmony with each other. Don't be too proud to enjoy the company of ordinary people and don't think you know it all. Never pay back evil with more evil. Do things in such a way that everyone can see you are honorable. Do all that you can to live in peace with everyone. That next morning, Tommy's pastor, who had been informed of all that had been going on, approached me with the news that he had just received word that Tommy's beloved grandmother had passed away. He was going to share this news with Tommy, and he wanted to let me know because he assumed Tommy would likely be going home from camp early as a result of this news, to be with family. But the pastor found me a little later after talking to Tommy and informed me that Tommy... This kid who had been bullied the day before in my cabin, struck with a belt, singled out, humiliated, now grieving the loss of his grandmother, given the option to go home, decided to stay at camp. And honestly, Tommy's decision didn't make a lot of sense to me. When wronged the way Tommy was wronged, the world typically only offers two options, retaliation or retreat. But Tommy chose neither, and instead offered perhaps the most profound demonstration of what it means to be part of these homoousius relationships we've been talking about this morning. Because Tommy chose love and forgiveness over every other option at his disposal. And friends, love and forgiveness is the stuff God is made of. When we live and act out of love, when we embrace the power of forgiveness, we share a oneness with God. And when we do that, things happen. While the other boys in the cabin were serving their three-hour banishment from camp activities and swimming the next day, I spoke with them candidly about what had happened with Tommy's grandmother and informed them of Tommy's decision to stay despite what they had done to him. And I'd like to think that the love and forgiveness that Tommy chose changed them. Because the rest of that week, this cabin of boys rallied together, including Tommy, and became a tight-knit community. They became siblings, yoked together by a love for one another that is rooted in God's love for us all. There was no more bullying. In fact, I was informed by a fellow counselor that my cabin had come over to his cabin to stop some bullying that they had heard about happening there. The love and forgiveness Tommy chose changed things. It changed our entire cabin. It even changed what was happening in other cabins. Jesus tells us this morning in this text from John 16 that the Holy Spirit will take what is his and declare it to us. And I believe that what Jesus is saying here is that the Holy Spirit's job is to declare Christ's love and forgiveness to us and the world. And when we find our way to hearing that declaration, digesting it, acting on it, that God works in and through us, just as God most certainly worked through Tommy, 
in ways that change our lives and the world around us. So may each of us and all of us be like Tommy. And remember that we are homoousius, that we are made of the same stuff as each other. That we, like the Holy Trinity, are called to live into community with one another so that we can cut through the ways the world, the ways of the world that lead to death, as they did for this young man who took his own life on Friday. May we each be a part of our young people learning to see Christ in others and in themselves. This is essentially the work that we're about at camp, is creating a space to do that. And may we, like Tommy, embrace the love and forgiveness that makes up the very substance of God as evidenced in the life, death, and resurrection of Jesus, so that we might be swept up into a life-changing, world-altering, and complex relationship with God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. Amen.